Welcome to Creative Tian Channel. Today we want to make a mitten with the LK150 knitting machine. Very similar to the last one, I will start with the cuff with a mark ribbon, cast on every other needle and hand it back to the machine and knit a few rows and we'll start the sample and I will put some waist yarn on these few stitches and then cast on with the waist yarn and continue knitting this part and after we take this off machine either with a few rows of waist yarn or just using a needle and a scrape yarn we'll do the show row on the top of the fingers and we learned the show row in the sock knitting video it's the same idea. It's a very simple one. And we'll knit a sum and then Kitchener stitch the sum part. And there are many ways to make the sum. You can always pick up the stitch and hand knit it. Or the easy way is to cast on the stitches and just knit until the length you like. Similar to the top of the head, you can decrease stitch to every other needle in the last few rows and just thread the yarn through so you can tighten it up at the top or you can do a little bit more fancy the show row way so you will have the same shape as the tip of the mitten so if you already made the fingerless mitten last time you have the stitch count and the row count that will fit you you can use that number for your reference the yarn I'm using today is the worsted weight or the regular median weight. For this project, I start cast on from left 18 to right 19 and do it every other needle. I have a few more stitch than last time because I think that one is a little bit tight for me. But you can adjust it any way you want. You can have one or two stitch less or more. And I'm going to use 5.5 tension for the first part until the thumb because I think this part tend to get tight. And then I will change it to tension 5 for the rest of the areas and the mass tension is number five so we can start with e wrap directly like last time and after one or two rows just hand some weight and knit 30 rows or if you want you can start with waist yarn it's easier to hand the weight with waist yarn first and the stitch will look more even but for a quick project i will just start directly with the main yarn so I start e wrapping the first row and I will knit one row and hand the weight. Now I change the counter to 000, and I will start knit 30 rows. After the 30 rows, I'm going to take up the weight and start to hand the stitches back to the empty needle. And we just pick up the, the V, the last stitch of the V, back to the empty needle. And don't forget about the one on the edge. There's the last V here and place it on the empty needle. And we pick up the next V or upside down V and then place on the next empty stitch. And we just keep going all the way. The third empty stitch. If you have an extra stitch at the end, you can just place on the last needle. Pull out all the needles to the holding position. You will knit better. And you can also increase uh, tension a little bit for this row only. I'm going to change to tension six and knit this row. And now we can continue knitting and remember to change the tension back. Change to 5.5 and then I will continue knitting 15 rows. And it's a good idea to add some weight first. 
counter back to 0, 0, 0 and I will need 15 rows. Now we need 15 rows. I will do it on the side that's opposite from the carriage. Now my carriage is on the left, so I will do it here. And the easiest way is just to take off the first eight stitches on the waist yarn using the needle. So I have the waist yarn with a needle and I'm just going to take it directly from the machine, thread it through the stitch and I will do the first eight stitches. Now these stitches are off the machine. I will put a clip here so it doesn't interfere when we continue knitting. I just clip it onto my knitting. And now we are going to e-wrap back this few stitch. So I just cut a piece of the waist yarn. You don't need a lot. And start e-wrapping. I like to start from the left side. Okay, and the handsome clip below. So again, it doesn't interfere with the uh, knitting later. And I can just clip here together. Now we have it on waist yarn, we can continue knitting. And from this point on, I like to change the tension to a little bit smaller. So I will change to T5, tension 5. After I change the tension to 5, I will need 20 rows. Do it slowly in the first few rows because this is a new cast on and it's a good idea to hand some weight. And now we are ready to do the short row, but first we have to take off half of the stitches. For me, it's easier just take it off the machine with the waist yarn. I like to show row the opposite side of the thumb hole, so the seaming will be on the palm side. So we will take off the right side, that's the same side as the thumb hole. Use some waist yarn and take it off the needles. Or another way is to put this side on hold and then use the waist yarn to knit a few rows on this side and then take it off the machine. And I always like to do the easiest way, so I will do the same with the waist yarn and just a needle. For the right side of the stitches, that's the right of the zero. It's okay to have one stitch more or one stitch less because we have odd number of the stitches, so it will not be the same on the left and right side. Now I take off the right side stitches on the waist yarn. You might need to take off some weight so it's easier to take it off. Now we just want to clip it to the knitting so it doesn't interfere with our next knitting. Now we are ready to do the show rows. If you saw my video about sock knitting, you probably know how I do show rows. It's very easy. We usually show row it down to one third of the stitch and then reverse show row back to the original stitches. And since we have 18 stitches, it can be 666. Six, six. But if you have a odd number, maybe when we do the other side, we have 19 stitches, you can adjust it so the center has one more stitch or one less stitch. To do the show row, we just want to make sure the Russell lever goes to one. We start with the needle close to the carriage, pull all the way out and knit one row. And then the right side, pull out and knit one row. And remember the show row will require a lot of weight, so we will hang some weight in the center and we can also pull it down by hand. And then do the second. F3 
after the six stitches on each side, we will do the reverse show row. And we we'll just place the yarn that's close to the carriage side below the first needle. It's also on the carriage side and uh, pull it back so the latch is a little bit open. And make sure you pull down the center part and knit one row. And we'll do the same on this side with this needle. Place a yarn below to wrap it and then place it back to the C position. So the latch is a little bit open and pull it down and knit. And we'll continue doing that until all needles are back. Now the short row is done, you can see it forms a pocket here. And then we will just need a few rows of the waist yarn and take it off the machine. You can leave a long tail of the yarn before you cut it. So you can use the yarn to do the kitchener stitch or sew up the side seam. So that's what it looks like. You can try it on and see if it fits your hand. This is a short row. We are going to do the kitchener stitch here and uh, we'll need the thumb next. Or if you want, you can just leave the hole here and bind it off. The easiest way to make thumb is just make a rectangle and I cast on 16 stitches because we have eight stitches on one side and then we can just need about 20 rows or 23 rows depends on how long your thumb is. You can try it on yourself and see. At the end you can just thread it through and pull it tight like that. Or if you want to make it a little bit nicer on the top, before you need the last three rows, you can place the stitches so it's every other needle. Just transfer every other needle to the next needle. So you have two stitches on one needle and then an empty stitch, two stitches on needle and then an empty stitch. It's similar to the top of the head. And now you have stitch on every other needle. You can knit two or three rows. And we'll just thread all the stitches with a young needle and then pull it tight. The method I like to show you is a short row one. So it matches our mitten. It has a nice flat shape. So I will start with a few rows of the waist yarn. And some weight and then we change to our main yarn. So you can decide what kind of tension you want. You can use a smaller one or the bigger tension. And I will do the same on the bottom part. I want to keep it a little bit looser and the top I will make it smaller tension. So I will start with 5.5 tension for the first part and change to tension 5 on the carriage. Now we start need the first five rows. And then we can decrease a little bit. And you can use a three prong tool or the two prong. I will use a two prong tool because the thumb is so small. We don't need a lot of stitches at the edge. And we just pull out the two stitch on the outer edge, push all the way in, transfer one stitch over, and place on the needle. So the second needle will have two stitches. And we put the first needle all the way back to the non-working position. And we do the same on the other side. We can continue knitting for another 10 rows before we do the shaping. And again, you can adjust it maybe 8 rows or 7 rows if you have smaller hands. And for the first row, I'm going to keep the tension. And after that, I'm going to reduce the tension a little bit. Now I change the tension to number 5, so it's tighter. 
and continue my 10 rows. So I have nine rows to go. Now I'm going to get ready for the short rows. And again, I like to take off the half of the stitches that's opposite to the carriage so we can work on show rows. Now we have 14 stitches, so half of it is seven stitches. Just take it off on the waist yarn and place all the needles back to the non-working position. And again, I will clip it to our knitting so it doesn't give us trouble later. Now we are ready to do the show row. Since we only have seven stitches, you can do three, one, three, or two, three, two. And I think the two, three, two probably make more sense because the three, one, three will have a very sharp angle, the triangle shape. So we will do our usual show row and make sure you pull down the center and start with the carriage side. And remember to change the setting to Russell Lever 1 on both sides. And first one, right side 1. And the second stitch, the second one. And then we do the reverse show row. We'll place the yarn below the first needle near the center and pull it back. And same on the right side. You create a little pocket here. Now we are going to need a few rows of the waist yarn and take it off the machine. So that's the sump we just needed. You can try it on. See this is the short row. And uh, we have to do the kitchener stitch here to close it and just sew up the side seam. That's what it looks like. And just remember when you need the second one, it should be symmetrical to the first one. And here is the sum hole, and uh, that's the show row part. And we take this off waist yarn, take this off waist yarn, the same side as the sum hole. And this is the show row part. So here are the pieces we just need. This is a little sum. And uh, we just need to do the Kitchener stitch here for the show row and the show row here to close that. And then we will attach the thumb, again the Kitchener stitch, and then we will sew up the side seam. You can use a flat seaming like I show you in the sock video. For the sum, I finish the Kitchener stitch and I start a little bit here on the side. So here is a setup for Kitchener stitch to close the sum hole. This might be a little bit tricky. So when you do the Kitchener stitch, this is the outside and matching the outside part. And then you can close it up and then you can fold it in half and you have a thumb. So the first A stitch will be matching this side and the second A stitch will match this side. And that's how we do it. And then you just need to knit another one that's symmetrical to this one. Thank you for watching and happy knitting.